This time I want to look at the high pass filter. The high pass filter, when you've got a series combination of a capacitor, resistor and inductor, is just the circuit where the output is taken as the voltage across the inductor. We can derive the frequency response just as before and we'll get this expression and from this we can determine the initial value of the step response. That's going to be 1 because the value of the frequency response when omega is infinite is 1. And we can determine the final value and that's going to be 0 since the value of the frequency response when omega is 0 is 0. So we know our step response is going to start at 1 just after the step arrives and it's going to end at 0. It's just a case of working out what sh the shape of the function is as it moves from 1 to 0. Once again we could go back to our general form because we know that the poles are the same for all of these three circuits and just work out the values of a, b and c, the constants, based on the initial voltages and currents and the final voltages and currents in this circuit. But the algebra gets a little bit tedious and once again there's a shortcut. And this time the shortcut works like this. We already know what the voltage is across the capacitor. That's just the step response of the low pass filter. And we know what the voltage across the resistor is. That's the step response of the bandpass filter. We know that the sum of the voltages across the resistor, the capacitor and the inductor must be 1 because Kirchhoff's voltage law tells us that. Therefore, the voltage across the inductor, which is the output of a high pass filter circuit, must be 1 minus the step response of the bandpass filter minus the step response of the low pass filter. From there, it's just rather a lot of tedious algebra. If you hack through all of that rather tedious algebra, you should end up with this, which is the form of the step response of the high pass filter. Now, first case of interest, very low Q factors, where one of the poles is much larger than the other pole. Let's say that P1 has a much larger magnitude than P0, and we could therefore write this as approximately 1 over P1, just neglecting the P0 since it's so much smaller than P1. Inside the bracket here, if P0 is so much smaller than P1, we can neglect this whole term. It's never going to have a very large value. And that will just give us this. The two factors of P1 cancel out. It's approximately e to the P1t. And that's the first order response due to the faster pole, the pole with the higher break frequency. So once again, in this extreme case, we have got something that's behaving like a first order system. It's just this time, the first order system is characterized by the pole with the higher frequency breakpoint. With complex poles, we end up with this type of waveform and this expression. And in the rather annoying case of two coincident poles, where we can't use either of those two expressions, uh, we end up with this. Once again, we can play around with these things in the simulator and get a feel for how the circuit changes as the Q factor changes by changing the value of the resistor in the circuit. Here we have the case of a very low Q factor, so we have two poles, both of which are real, but they have very different magnitudes. And we have a what looks like a first order response, dominated by the higher frequency breakpoint of the pole. The initial value really is 1, no matter what scale we zoomed in on, the step is reflected in the output immediately. It's really hard to see that that is a second order response rather than a simple first order response. Once we start increasing the Q factor, however, by changing the resistor, we can see that the response is changing shape and we start to get this overshoot 
or undershoot really, and ripple appearing in the output. And that's the family of step responses of the high pass filters of second order systems. The only thing that remains for me to do in the last of these videos is to quickly show you a few other more interesting step responses of a few other circuits.